In today's episode of Road to the Show, we are talking to Ziggy Moto, and we are looking into the future, literally. <laughs> it's here, but it's not here. <laughs> So the rabbit is out of the hat. The future bike for our show poster triptych is Shapeshift by Ziggy Moto. Now last year, Paul built us a physical bike for the poster and this year there was only one man to talk to for a vision of the future. Paul, thanks for coming down, mate. Uh, it's a pleasure. And thank you for building us this digital bike. But this is your world, this is what you do, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, no, it's a hobby, I guess. It's, a, it's, a, it's outside of the day job. It's the thing that I get excited about. It's a blending, I guess, of what I do during the day, but then with something I really love, which is the bike stuff. Right. Um, and then sort of through posting on Instagram, lots of visuals and images and designs, some of which excite me so much, I end up making them. Yeah. You know, and, and the bikes last year were, were all a result of that. They'd all been through this process. They'd all come through the CGI side of things first. And we had four bikes at the show yeah, last four. year, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I was amazed. I was blown away. I Honoured and privileged. Glad to have my other poster still here. Yeah, it's my claim to fame. I love that. Um, well, it's gone to a new level this year. We're going to have four Ziggy Moto bikes at the show again this year. Yes. We're having some of your early, older builds. Yeah, yeah more embarrassing builds. So yeah. I think that's important to see as well. Not that I'm, you know, nothing's ever perfect, but they could they could be better. But they're still, you know, right. And we're going to have the future bike in augmented reality, yeah. which we saw briefly in the intro to this. But that's it's almost a two-part build. This isn't it? There's the uh, there's the photorealistic yep. poster version, and then there's the augmented reality version, and then there's the complexity of the brief we ended up coming up with, which is a bike from the future with an undetermined drivetrain and ergonomically adaptable. Yeah. Exactly, I think it's a brilliant brief, you know, but in some ways terrifying because it's like, where'd you go? You could go sort of spaceships and rockets and floating and all of that <laughs> stuff. I wanted it to feel credible, plausible, potentially here next year, yeah. you know, and I think that it could be. And I think it was a, it's a, it's a tangible vision of the future, I think. Absolutely, what, and what could be. you've got some of how you went about the process here, don't you? So. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think the thing was about, you know, what's better than one bike? It's three bikes. I don't know a biker who's, who's completely content with the one bike that they've got. Definitely the idea. Not. That you could buy into a thing that could change and, and make a positive out of the benefits of maybe electric or hydrogen where not only could you change the proportion so we sort of start off with this simple geometry but then build into we put some flesh on the bones but not only benefit from a sports bike to a cruiser to a dirt bike but then the power plant that electric motor more than just going into wet mode could then deliver on like a, the performance of a single cylinder dirt bike Right. Or a big V-twin for a cruiser or a, you know, a oh, so four-cylinder. You, you don't just see the shifting of this as being ergonomic. It's an entire feel of the motor yeah. and the power delivery. And, and it's completely customizable, I guess, and gets everyone to scratch that itch where they want to make it unique. Yeah. You know, and we talked about that chameleon paint scheme that BMW are doing now, so it's not that far fetched, but being able to change the livery as well at the same time would be yeah. amazing. You know, and being able to choose it on your phone. Mm. You know, my color scheme for that for that day's ride would be amazing. So doing it in CGI, building all of this, proving out the principles, there's some leaps of faith in there, it's an early concept. Yeah. But then what's nice about it is that's all dimensionally fairly accurate. And like you said, proportionally, that relationship between bars, feet and pegs all shifts and moves. Um, but allows you to get it a perfect custom fit, like a tailored yeah. suit. You said, you know, bikes don't tailor as well as they could. No. Um, well, if you think when you get in a car, you can move the seat, you can move the steering wheel, you can fit it to yourself. Yeah. I mean, 90% of bikes I get on, I can barely ride because I'm in such an awkward configuration. And that, I mean, this is a step further. This is three personalities in one bike. Yeah. But, but I think it does do all those things. And the idea of how many people have you heard said, I gave up my sports bike because it started to hurt my hands. Yeah. You know? Um, but the idea being that actually I could ride a sports bike for the afternoon, then for the journey home, I could just raise the bars a little bit, Sit back. drop the seat a little bit, yeah. maybe put it in full cruiser mode to go along the beach as the sun goes down. You know, in that British I love life, this we idea. all pretend we live in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to see this happen. I mean, today, mm. we can have a walk around it, can't we? Because yeah, we can. we've got the augmented reality version here. Yeah, virtually, it's slightly frustrating because it makes it almost so tangible. You're like, oh, I just wish it was real. Yeah, you want to swing a leg over yeah, it. Yeah, and... I know. But, you know, but it also highlights some of the things that I might change. So between now and right. the actual show, I might tweak some of the design ever so slightly. Because when you see it in real, albeit virtual real, um, it changes things. But 
yeah. it messes with my head. We'll, we'll do this in just a sec. But like, like Dan said, it's almost like those early versions of motion pictures where people saw a train coming towards them and jump out of the way. You think it's there when you look at it through your phone because we're yeah. so used to that interface. And everyone's going to be able to do this at the show. We will have it at the show so you can load it up on your phone, put it in your pocket and take it away and put it in your front room when you yeah. get home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's been in every room in our house so far. <laughs> Should we stick it in here? Yeah, let's give it let's a go. Let's do it. So, <laughs> here it is. It's in Bike Shed Shoreditch on Arch 3. Paul, you're kind of the cameraman here because Dan's filming it through your your eyes. But we can do a walk around, can't yeah. we? I mean, yeah, virtual walk, virtual walk around. Yeah, you know. So I think this hubless wheel, you know, was more driven by making it feel contemporary, and pretty, mm. you know, and that sort of futuristic looking feel. But there are some benefits, I think. You know, the big radial discs, and then this yeah. idea of, you know, sort of um, magnet traction or whatever it may be. But ultimately, this cartridge. So the suspension can move up and down inside those arms, so you kind of create that look. But also the wheel can rotate left to right, you get the steering angles. Yeah. And it kind of gives it that flexibility. I just, also, I just think of Tron with those hubless wheels. Yeah. <laughs> Could you put a light in there as well? Yeah, we did have. Did yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. I did. And the tyres, I mean... Yeah, so it's kind of crude on the augmented reality version, but you know, we're seeing already technology where tyres can change profile and they're mm. looking at new things like that. So the idea being you could go from a slick to a road tyre to a dirt, you know, for wet weather. So I think something like that could be amazing. amazing. So it's not only the motor that changes the performance behaviour, the, the composition, the overall look and feel of it. Oh, that's you know. the racer, I love that. Yeah, and then just sort of that, that idea of the sort of that geometry effectively, mm. the ratio between your saddle, the bars and the pegs are kind of the only important three parts. I love the way the pegs, so they, your, your logo is a perfect <laughs> map for them to move through, isn't it? Moving through the bottom of the ZM there. Yeah, I mean, it's bonkers, you know, at the moment sort of alluding. It's, it's sort of simplified because of the augmented reality like sort of almost gaming technology polygons, so low poly counts. Yeah. Sort of pushing it to the limit of what you could probably get away with. But we can move, you can kind of move all the way around it, can't you? Come on, down, keep up. This is the hardest up. thing I've ever tried to film. <laughs> yeah. Keep up, stay Keeping behind us him. close, it's closer than we should be. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, I think there's lovely that stance, the personality, and the idea of that sort of retractable, you know, people always sort of criticise my stuff for having no mud guards, and it's barely a mud guard, but as it sort of pops yeah. up, you know, the dirt star can come in. Maybe if you want the short sort of arse look on it, you yeah. know, that can retract. And you've got so many details, you can come right into the clocks. I mean, it's I'm hovering my hand above nothing, but <laughs> yeah. I can just kind of feel like it's there. Yeah. It still blows my mind. It's crazy. It is bonkers, isn't it? A little bit of branding. <laughs> oh, sorry. The thing you probably can't quite capture is how... Go, keep up, Dan. <laughs> Because <laughs> I kind of, you want to go back, look. Because when you get further away, it looks more believable. And so, uh, look, there it goes for scale reference. Remember, he's incredibly tall. Is it? Am I kind of here? <laughs> that's the shot. That is. Yeah, that's it. That's the shot. That's what everyone can do. What position am I in? Cruiser. Yeah, like a teapot. Ah, that just suits you. you like but it, the it's adventure. so weird because I know how tangible it looks for you guys, but for me, I'm stood in front of an empty plinth. I know. For that adventure one, really suits you. I think it's yeah. So, but I think this is kind of where I get excited. I've not been able to put myself in the position you're in. Do you want to swap? And take a photograph yet. No, because I'll look, I won't be able to be seen behind it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's yeah. just, it's wonderful. And the thing is, is at the show, we're going to have a setup on a plinth and everyone will be able to do this and sort of visualize the bike through their own phone. They'll be able to put it in their pocket, take it home. I've had mine in my front room at home. <laughs> It's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, but I love this idea because companies do it with trainers, don't they? You can try them on, on your feet before you buy. Yeah, I think and this is... This is... The hard, first year, I think we could, we could have a whole virtual room next year. We could, yeah. yeah. You know, what, just lay out the plinths and you'll map it out completely. We do, yeah. But, you know, I think what would be nice now is if we could get this... It'd built. be lovely to build. Yeah, yeah. built it. Even if it's just a sort of a rolling concept, I think if we could get it something along these lines it would change probably a lot but i think it'd be exciting yeah that'd be awesome well uh 2024 yeah it's plenty <laughs> of time. oh mate well um this is about the point where i feel obliged to do lots of jokes about wheeling it out and all of that stuff but i promise oh, dan oh. <laughs> i promise dan we won't so um Thank you. Uh, no, Thanks for building it. And yeah. Um, yeah, here's to digital bikes and physical bikes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They'll be both at the 2023 Bike Shed Show. It's going to be in a couple of weeks' time now, isn't it? So, crikey, get your tickets and we'll see you there and you can take this home.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Road to the Show. We've got plenty more to come. We're meeting shed builders, we're meeting pro builders, and they're going to be coming out every week in the build up to the show, 26th, 27th, 28th of May. Get your tickets at bikeshedmotoshow.com and we will see you there and you can take home your very own shapeshift.